Let me tell you a story. It's March of 2023, I'm 17, standing in the middle of a high school gym, about to collapse. There's over 200 people screaming at me as I am quite literally about to faint. Blood is rushing to my head, my legs are burning, my whole body is shaking uncontrollably, but I'm not gonna stop. I know I can do this and I know I have to do this and I've gotten this far, so I'm gonna finish it. I'm waiting for anyone to tell me to stop, but there's still nothing. I feel like I have been here for centuries and people are still yelling their lungs out for me. After what feels like an eternity, the judge finally gives me the signal to put it down and it's followed by a massive thud on the ground. Fortunately, the thud wasn't me hitting the ground. It was the weight that I had just put down. I had just pulled a PR deadlift of 440 pounds at my first powerlifting competition. This was the weight that I needed to pull to have an 1,000 pound total, which was my goal, and I had just hit it. I can barely think from just moving all that weight and I managed to stumble over to my teammates who give me a big congratulations. At this point in the competition, I was second in my weight class and the guy who was first place was about to do his final deadlift attempt. He had already pulled close to 425 and his total was higher than mine from the squat that he'd done so there was no chance of me catching up at this point but he was still gonna go pull this attempt to try and beat his PR. I watch as he walks up to the bar, sets his feet and gets ready for the lift. As he starts to pull, I can already see that his grip is gonna slip and that he's not gonna get this weight up. After struggling for a few more seconds and trying to pick it up, the weight falls out of his hands and he fails the lift. Immediately after his lift, he storms off the lifting platform and he is just pissed. He walks over to the warm-up area, throws his belt off the ground and starts swearing more than your average Canadian hockey dad. F I had that f thing, it just the sh flipped out of my hands, f this, and just keeps going on and on and on. While he's going off about not getting this lift up, I was just kind of sitting there happy with myself for hitting this PR thinking like, Bro, you, you won, like why are you so pissed? It's just one lift. It was then that I realized that if I was in that same position and I didn't get my PR, I probably wouldn't react like that, but I would still be mad. Weightlifting is one of those things where there's always more to lift, there's always a new PR to get, and you'll never be truly satisfied with your results. Even though this story has absolutely nothing to do with being an artist, it demonstrates a lesson that most artists will never learn. You will never be happy as an artist, and here is why. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> My name is Kobe Wallace and I am helping songwriters all over the world access their true creative potential by improving the rest of their lives. I want you to imagine you go and ask someone who doesn't play guitar or any instrument for that matter and ask them if they believe they're talented in music. What would they tell you? Probably that they have absolutely zero talent because they can't play any chords, have no rhythm and have no sense of pitch either. If you were then gonna ask a beginner who could maybe play a couple chords on guitar, maybe play like a mean four on the floor beat, if they were talented, what do you think they'd tell you? Most likely, they would tell you they have no talent at all because they can't play a really good solo or they can't do what an intermediate player can do. If you then go and ask an intermediate musician who's been playing for a couple years, can play a pretty good guitar solo or is a pretty solid drummer, if they're talented, what do you think they'd say? Probably that they're not talented at all because they can't do what the guys who have been playing for decades can do and they can't play like an advanced musician. This is the trap that the majority of people fall into when they start learning how to play music. They see someone who can do a cool thing on the instrument that they're learning, like maybe play a really cool guitar solo and start to think to themselves, oh man, if I could just do that, that right there, I would be happy. Then they practice really, really hard for a while, spend months and months getting to that level and they finally get there and what happens? It's cool for about 15 seconds, and then they see something else, someone who's better than them can do this really cool thing. Oh, let me work on that, and if I could just do that, I would be happy. Now there's nothing wrong with wanting to learn new things and always constantly trying to get better, but this vicious cycle is a problem. This is the cycle that a lot of musicians get caught up at the technical level, but, but it can also relate to what happens when we write music. A lot of times we get caught up in trying to make something as perfect as it can possibly be. When you're trying to make a song, the whole process can be very lengthy. First, you gotta write the whole thing, get all the lyrics or the arrangement, what kind of different instruments you're gonna have on it. Then you gotta record a bunch of parts and then lay the foundation. And then once you have that, 
there's always this cycle of trying to add something new or just make it that little bit better so it's perfect and it finally gets to where you want it to be. Oftentimes when I'm writing lyrics, sometimes I'll get caught up in wanting to change like one little line or one little word so it fits the topic perfectly. Or I'll record a guitar solo 67 times until I get the perfect take and then once I actually get that take, I'm not even happy with that because I want to change this note or like change this whole phrase and I don't like this section all that much and just this constant cycle of wanting to change things just keeps going. Trust me, there is nothing wrong with wanting to put a lot of work into one song, but eventually this has to stop. I remember when I was trying to record some of the first songs I was ever going to release and I had one of my friends over to do a verse on one of them. He listened to the instrumental a couple times, kind of get his flow, see what he wanted to add on it, and then go for take one. Go through the take, make a mistake, then wanted to change something, do another take. Didn't get it all the way through and eventually wanted to change it and just kept doing more takes, more adjustments, and did this for about like two hours for one verse. Eventually he kept listening back to some of the takes that he'd done and just decided to delete them all because he didn't like what he'd done. We ended up coming out of that session with nothing because he wasn't satisfied with any of them. It's our constant pursuit of perfection that causes this to happen. Oftentimes we can feel reluctant or afraid to show our original music to people when it's not fully ready because we feel like it's not ready or good enough yet. We think, oh, I need more time to practice or I need more adjustments and it's, it's not ready yet. But the truth is, it will never be ready. A song will never be perfect and you'll never be 100% satisfied with anything that you do. There's always something that you'll be able to do better and this is why you'll never be happy as an artist. Because if you're chasing perfection, you're never gonna get it no matter how hard you try. It does not exist, even if you think it does. There will always be something to change or something that your mind will tell you you can do better than it currently is. So if you're never gonna be truly happy with anything you ever create, should you just give up on music entirely? I mean, if you don't truly love it, then yeah, go ahead. Because there's only one way to combat the endless search for perfection. You need to find joy in the process of pursuing the endless goal of perfection. You need to love the fact that you can always create something better and you need to be able to use that as fuel for your future creations. Recently, I was listening to a podcast between legendary music producer Rick Rubin and Dr. Andrew Huberman, and there's a section in that podcast where Huberman asks Rubin about perfection in the albums that he's produced and trying to make something too perfect. The answer he gave was something along the lines of how he always feels that there could have been something he's done better on a record, but eventually he just has to leave it. He has to take it and move on and just let that record be what it is because you need to take the lesson you've learned from creating that record and apply what you've learned to the next thing that you're gonna create. See how you can make that one better because you can't put everything in one record. If you truly love your creative process and you truly love to just search for new styles, new inspiration, you're gonna wanna make more than one album. So never get caught up in trying to just put everything into one. For me right now, I'm working on the final album that I would categorize as primarily rap where I'm using a bunch of samples and like beats and like the priority is like me rapping because after this I'm gonna make a hard rock album I also want to make like an R&B album where I just do like a little bit of singing and a little bit of rap but there's a whole bunch of other features and I have loads of other artists on it then do kind of like a reggae and jazz thing like there is so much stuff that I still want to make and because of this I can't get caught up in trying to make one perfect and spend five years trying to make this one album perfect because there's like five other genres that I want to do so I would not have time for that because there's just so much other stuff that I want to make. All I can do is simply put the best foot forward that I have right now and put everything into it that I can, like 100% of myself into this album. But then once I learn from it and once I learn from this process and there's something that I want to do better, then I go apply it to the next one that I want to make. And honestly, this is just how I want to go through my everyday life. Just pursuing whatever piques my interest at the time and putting all of myself into it but then once it's over, accepting the fact that I need to let it go and moving on to the next thing. In order to be happy in what you create and just live a fulfilling life in general, you need to embrace the past, be grateful for the present, but also look to shape the future. Never stop creating, my friend. See you in the next one. I will never get a break from these planes. Ever. It's just not going to happen. That's okay. It's, it, it, it is what it is.